Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives. The only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening. And now, enjoy the show. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Someone said to me the other day, You know, E.G., you talk a lot about imagination. At first, I thought he might be right. But the more I thought about it, the more it seemed to me he was wrong. Far as I can see, there isn't a more powerful force in the world than imagination. After all, I made a career with mine, in films, TV, on the stage, imagining myself to be all sorts of characters. And you, well, you derive much pleasure from yours when... You become the hero or heroine of the stories I bring you. As tonight, each woman will become Dora, and each man, Charles Daring, caught up in circumstances which... Well, listen. A clock. A clock. What, Dora? What? That clock, Charlie. It's going to drive me up the wall. Oh, come on now. It's only a clock. Grandfather clock. It never stops. Day and night, it goes on and on like his heart. He said, your Uncle Jonas said that its beat was like his own heart. Steady, solid, never stopping. Charlie, we've got to get out of here. We've got to leave this awful place. I know, I know, but where can we go, Dora? Where? We're trapped. <laughs> mystery drama, The Tell-Tale Heart, was especially adapted from the Edgar Allan Poe classic for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Fred Gwynn. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Sinoff, the sinus medicines. I'll be back shortly with Act One. As you know, I've always had an intense interest in diaries, the day-to-day -day journals of those who, for one reason or another, recorded the events of their daily lives. This strange tale I bring you now is remarkable, not only for the horror it records, but also because it was written by a patient in a state asylum for the criminal insane, a man named Charles Daring, who on a day not long ago wrote... True. I am nervous. I've always been nervous, but... Uh, why do they say I am mad? My sick nerves are sharpened my senses. Not destroyed them or dulled them. Why, take my sense of hearing. Acute. My ears are... have always been sharp. So, <laughs> nervous, yes. Mad, no. Judge for yourself. Listen to how calmly I can tell you the whole story of what happened. Beginning with the day I arrived at Uncle Jonas's farm with my dear wife, Dora, and my daughter, Ruth. Well, we're here. I didn't think the old bus would make it. Charlie, are you all right? Yeah. You're yeah, trembling. I'm... I'm I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Take one of your pills, anyway. I, oh, I'm okay. I said, Dora, I'm okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Guess I am a bit keyed up. Long, tiring trip. Near 14 hours. Wearing the car was going to break down, but uh, I'm all right now. We're here. Looks lonely, Daddy. Real lonely. Oh, Ruthie. It's a roof over our heads until things get better. Hello there. 
Hello! Here <laughs> at last, I see. I thought you'd never get here. <laughs> of course, your little Charlie Derry, my nephew. All grown up now, though, huh? Hello, Uncle Jonas. Gosh, it's good to see you. And this beautiful young woman is your wife's daughter, huh? And this charming little girl, your daughter, Ruth. That's, that's right. Well, uh, come on in. Our place is, uh, might run down, I'm afraid, but, well, you know, I'm, I'm not as young as I used to be, and being way out here in what practically wilderness, it's hard to get help. Well, you'll have me now, Uncle Jonas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only, uh, are you up to working, Charlie? You said in your letter you were sick. The reason you lost your job in the city and couldn't find another. Oh, well, now, uh, about that... Oh, oh, don't be embarrassed, boy. Out with it. Just tell me the truth of it. No, 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 no. Better still, you tell me, Dora. Uh, well, uh... Charlie isn't really sick. I, I mean, you know, physically. He's as strong as any other man, and he's healthy, too. Only, uh, it, it, it's his nerves, that's all. That's all? Well, that's a lot, ain't it? Well, no, not really. It's just that, that now and then he uh, gets these terrible headaches that kind of knock him out, and he starts trembling and sweating, and it kind of a cold sweat. Well, now, this sounds real bad. No, 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 it isn't, Uncle Jonas. Honest. <laughs> These attacks, they don't happen all the time. Not much, only now and then. And I've got a... I've got these pills the doctor gave me, and, well, listen, you'll see. I'm gonna earn our keep here, Uncle Jonas. Make you glad you took us in when we needed a roof over our heads. I'm a hard worker, Uncle Jonas. A real hard worker. Well, sure you are, Charlie. And I'm sure Dora is, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then Ruth. <laughs> she looks like a good, strong girl of her age. And how old are you, Ruthie? Nine, sir. Nine years old. My gracious, would you believe I'm 60 years older than you? <laughs> know what I've got in mind for you to do? No, sir. Something you like? Feeding the chickens. Now, won't that be fun? Oh, yes, sir. Of course it will. That milking the cows. Well, I guess you'll have to learn how to do that, but old Uncle Jonas will show you. Oh, then there's the horses, Jake and Jenny, use them for plowing, you know. You'll want to take care of them, feed them, clean their stalls, change their hay. Uh, uh, excuse me, Uncle Jonas. Mm -hmm. Yes, Charlie, yes? Uh, Ruth is a healthy girl, all right, strong for her age and all, but, well, all those chores, I, I think they might be just a bit too much for her. Oh, no, 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 not at all. You're good, Charlie. Make a woman of her. Well, look, suppose I milk the cows. But you'll be out in the fields by that time, plowing, seeding, cultivating, getting the crops in, and all like that. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I see. Dora will be so busy in the house, you know, cooking, washing, housework, and such. Well, she won't have time for that, so... Oh, no, 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 no. I got it all figured out, Charlie. You just leave it to me. Ah, well, say, now, uh... The way you look, maybe you didn't mean it when you said you meant to work for your keep. Now, now, time for bed. So I better show you to your room. Bed? But the sun's only just gone down behind the mountain. Yeah, that's right. It gets dark fast this time of year. Hey, Charlie, I don't like to waste kerosene keeping lamps going all night. But, um, uh, Uncle... We I... get up with the chickens, we go to bed with the chickens, Dora. I, I was only going to say that we haven't eaten anything since noontime. Oh. Oh, hungry, are you? Well, yes. Oh. Well, let's see what I can scare up in the kitchen. Mm, not much right now, I'm afraid. An old man like me don't eat very much. Kind of get out of the habit. Charles. Charles, what have we got ourselves into? Well, sounds like he means to work us hard. To death, more like it. Charlie, I don't like your uncle. He scares me. <laughs> As always, Uncle Jonas didn't mean to work us to death, or at least until we dropped, and always laughing jovially. 
joking that city life had weakened us and farm work would soon make us strong. Well, as day went into week, we grew more and more exhausted from overwork and hungrier from lack of enough food. One morning in the kitchen. Charlie, you're back from the fields early. Early? It's nearly 12 and I've been plowing and seeding since before dawn. I'm pushed. Got a cup of coffee. I'll see if there's any left in the pot. He only lets me make one pot for the day, you know. I know. <laughs> oh, where's Ruth? She was lying down. She came in from cleaning the horse stall, said she felt faint. She went to lie down, but... Uh... But what? <laughs> he sent her out again. Said there was nothing wrong with her. That she was faking. I've got to do something about all this. It can't go on. What can you do? We're broke, we're penniless, miles from nowhere, with a broken down car. We're trapped. If I could only fix that carburetor. But I need a new part, a butterfly valve. Oh, forget it. We haven't got a chance. Maybe we have. The game warden. Game warden? Here. What's left of the coffee? A fellow named Carrington. Uh, Harrington. Something like that. He came by the other day, all the way from Pompert. Stopped to talk for just a minute. Said he makes it out this way about once a month or so, and if he could get that part for me in Pompert. Well, now, what's this, what's this, what's this? In the kitchen instead of in the fields, drinking coffee at this hour, Charlie? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Uncle Jonas, but I just had to have something to keep me going. Sorry? Oh, not to be sorry about Charlie. If you're tired out, you're tired out. Nerves, huh? No, 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 no. Nerves, okay. Can't be. Got to be your nerves. Can't be the work. You're not doing that much. Jonas. <laughs> Jonas, this past week I've plowed nearly 20 acres and seeded more than five. By my Lord, Charlie, in my prime, I used to do that in three days. Now, now I'll tell you, Charlie, I... I wanted you to get started on the lower field this afternoon, but if you're all tuckered out, you can't pull your weight around no, here. No, 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 Jonas, I can do it. I can do it. I don't want to force you to something, Charlie. Yeah, I can do it, Jonas. Well, that's good. Good. Now, you go on out and work that field till one o'clock, and then we'll all sit down and have a good midday feed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure, Jonas. Sure. A good midday feed? Is that what you said, Uncle Jonas? When are you going to stop calling me uncle? Makes me feel old for a pretty young heifer like you to call me uncle. Much too old. Oh, please. If you don't mind. Well, now, what have I done? I just put my hands on your shoulders... And where well, I'd really like to put them. Don't you ever do that again. <laughs> well, now, if I'd known you were going to take it like that, I wouldn't have. And I won't, Dora. Never again. Never again, that is, until you ask me. <laughs> upset. Upset. You're all upset. Tell me what happened after I left. Tell me. Charlie, please. I've got to get supper on the table. What there is of it. Something happened between you and Jonas. What was it? Charlie, it was nothing. What it... was it? He tried... He tried... He tried to get fresh. What do you mean, get fresh? Charlie. I want to know... It isn't anything much. He, he just put his hands on my shoulder. And? Well, he sort of let his hands slip. Charlie, that was all. Believe me, that was all. I told him never to do anything like that again, and he won't. Charlie, believe me, he won't. Oh, he won't. I'll see to that. Where is he? Charlie. Where is he? Charlie, I... I, I, I think he's in that room he keeps closed, the one he uses for an office. Where are you going? To have a talk with Uncle Jonas. Charlie, wait. He's ordered us, ordered us never to set foot in that room. 
I want a word with you, Jonas. Having a, another attack of nerves, Charlie? Must be. Can't imagine you busting in here otherwise. You know why I'm here, and it isn't my nerves. Well, then what is it? What is it, Charlie? That clock. Charlie. That clock, the way it ticks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everybody knows that. Everybody's ever been in this room, that is. It's more like a heartbeat, you say, huh? Strong, solid, full life. Like my heartbeat. But that isn't what you come to talk about. You... You you insulted my wife today. Insulted? You you made advances, put your hands on her. And that was an insult? What do you call it? Oh, a compliment to her beauty, her female attraction. You dirty-minded, hypocritical old... Charlie! Dora, what? Uh, Ruthie. And for a reason I didn't understand then... As I looked at Dora holding Ruth, my dead daughter, in her arms, I was aware only of the ticking of the clock. Trapped. Yes. Surely that's the word for Charles and Dora Daring, who accepted the help of Uncle Jonas, his offer to come and live on his isolated farm, only to find that his farm is a prison. Charles' diary continues, and we'll read it together, you and I, when I return shortly with Act Two. Dead. Only a word with little significance, really, unless spoken for the first time about someone you love. He is dead. She is dead. Then it hits you. The full impact of the word's terrible meaning. What do you do in that awful moment? How do you react? Some burst into tears. Others are numbed into a silence. Whatever the emotion, it is deep and very personal, as was Charles Daring's. Perhaps even a curious reaction born of his nervous condition, for he writes in the diary... And for a reason I didn't understand then, as I looked at Dora holding Ruth, my dead daughter, in her arms, I was aware only of the ticking of the clock. That huge grandfather clock in the room my uncle called his office. It grew louder and louder, filling, saturating the room with its beat. The beat that my uncle said was like the beat of his heart. Slow, steady, solid... And then, through the beating, as if from far off, I heard Dora's voice. Dead. She's dead, Charlie. Our little girl. <laughs> no, 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 Dora, you're mistaken. Here, let, let me take her in my arms. Ruthie. This is Daddy. Can you hear me, dear? Ruthie. Kid's dead. Anybody can see that. Can't be. Charlie. Charlie, dear. Give her to me. Let me take her. Yes. Put her on the bed in our room. Let her rest. Let her. <laughs> Let her rest. Now, come on now, Charlie. You can't go to pieces. Gotta act like a man. Got to face up. Leave him alone. Huh? What's that? You've killed his daughter. Isn't that enough for one day? Leave him alone. Her uh, 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 grave's filled in at last. Uh, we better get back to the house. This wind cuts to the bone. Oh, cows do for milking, too. I guess you or Dora have to do that from now on. So, 
Might as well get started. Not before I say a few words. Over Ruthie. What? Oh, go ahead. Then you can get to the milking. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. What? Dora, Dora, wake up. I'm not asleep. Listen. It's only the storm, dear. No, 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 not the storm. Listen. To what, dear? The clock. The grandfather clock in Jonas's office. Listen. You never hear it, Charlie. I hear it. And his office is downstairs at the other end of the house. He keeps the door closed. You're imagining. No, I can hear it. My ears, you know how sensitive they are. Darling, try to sleep. I can't. I keep thinking of Ruthie. Now I... little Ruthie lying out there alone in the ground, the rain beating down, the cold rain. Try not. Try not. And the clock to... beating like his heart beating. Hers lies still. We'll never beat again. I, 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 Charlie, I can't bear it. Darling. <laughs> Darling, I'll get you a pill for your nose. Don't, don't leave me, don't. The bottle's down in the kitchen. Only a minute. I'll be right back. Only a minute. Oh. Oh, I started you go. Well, I didn't expect to find you in the kitchen this late. My glass of warm milk to help me sleep. There's a little left. You'd like some? No, I, I, I just came down to get Charlie's pills. Oh, I'm glad you did. Yeah, long time since I've seen a woman in her nightgown. I thought the bottle was here on the shelf. <laughs> you might as well stop looking for them pills. What do you mean? I threw them away. Charlie's pills? He don't need them. He only thinks he does. Are you out of your mind? They're all that keep him from going completely to pieces. Oh, don't believe it. A lot of nonsense. Doctor's nonsense. You didn't throw them away. Where are they? No. I threw them away, all right. Then you must want him to break down completely. That's it, isn't it? I've known all along what you were up to, but I wouldn't admit it to myself. Now I know. Oh, and you tell me. Stay away from me. Don't you touch me. I swear. If you do, I'll tell all I know. I'll tell who? Who's there to tell? Oh, get your <laughs> hands. I'll tell who? Tell, huh? tell who? <laughs> Only one around, Charlie. I'll get to town. Somehow I'll get to town. I'll tell the police. You meant to kill Charlie. Work, starve him to death. So you could be alone with me. Have me. Like I've got you. You filthy rotten swine. No. Swine. Oh. Hey, beast. Stop him. He's killing me. Charlie. Charlie, kill. no. Kill. Charlie, no. If you ever put your dirty hands on my wife again, I'll kill you. There was no sleep for us that night, Dora and me. And by the time dawn showed beyond the mountains, we'd come to a decision. Too late to save our beloved daughter, but in time to save ourselves. If, if I could somehow manage to fix the car. So, after the usual skimpy breakfast, a piece of unbuttered bread and a cup of weak coffee. What's all this? Golly. What you up to? Getting Dora and me out of here. That's what I'm up to. Oh, now, come on. Hold on, Charlie. Hold on. Let's talk this over. There's nothing to talk over. I don't think I knew what I was doing, Charlie. I really don't think so. Well, you did it, and it, and it wasn't the first time. I know. I know. Starring us to death. Working us to death. You killed Ruthie, you did. No. No. Charlie... You got to forgive me for what I've done without meaning. You work us and starve us. I thought it was best for you. But I was wrong. And I admit it. And I ask you 
to forgive me. Well, Don't, Charlie. Don't do it. Oh, now, Charlie. Don't you see what he's up to? If we leave, and we're leaving, he loses whatever work he can get out of you before you drop in your tracks. And he loses me. Now, now, girl. Daughter. Don't you, you daughter me. Any woman could see through the likes of you. You'll kill him. That's why you threw away the pills he needs. And then you'll have me all to yourself. All alone. Out here in this forsaken wilderness. To do whatever you want with. Charlie, get that car running. If it's at all possible, get that car running. <laughs> How far have we come, Charlie? Only six, near seven miles. That leaves about 25 to come to... If we get over this mountain. Dora. Of course. I keep wondering, when we get to Pomfret, what do we do? I mean, where will we stay? How we... We can stay in the car for a day or two if we have to. And my suitcase is full of food. Well, I took every scrap of food I could lay my hands on. Good, good for you. Oh, no. What? Charlie, what? We're cooked, honey. Just plain cooked. What? The butterfly valve. I knew it wouldn't last the trip. But you fixed it once. Yeah, and for the last time. It can't be fixed again. Now, what do we do? Now, what do we do? We start walking. 25 miles through the mountains. 25 miles. We can't go back. We got to, honey. I'm, I'm in no condition to make it 25 miles to Pomfret. You are. You can. You've got to. If we go back, it's death for you. And for me. We can't go back. <laughs> I figured you would. In fact, I knew you would. How did you know? How could you be so sure? What else could you do once you run out of gas? It wasn't that. I filled a tank from those cans in the barn. And I emptied it, Charlie. You? Left just enough for you to get maybe ten miles. I noticed you had a busted gas gauge so you'd never know. You were the most... Cr- now, now, now. I did it for your own good. You lying. What would you have done when you got the pumpkin? Charlie, why do you always stare at that clock? The ticking, it hurts my ears, my, 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 my hearing. Awful sensitive. Painful. Listen, I'm sorry about what happened before you left. We're going to change all that. We're going to be friends. Try to be, anyhow. Yeah, let's have a drink on it. A toast to the future. Our future together. <laughs> After you, my dear. And Charlie, a glass for you. Although, uh, maybe before you drink it, uh, but now, if, only if you won't mind, Charlie, you won't, will you? Mind what, Uncle Jonas? Milking the cows, feeding the chickens, before night comes on. No. No, no, I don't mind. And now, daughter, a toast to us and our future together. evil old man, a ruthless old man, and unhappily, a victorious old man. What lies ahead now for Dora and Charles Daring? I know because I read Charles' diary. You will know shortly when I return for Act Three.
one wonders at times on the nature of evil. What is it in all of us that on one occasion or another will make us do wrong when we know it to be wrong? St. Paul said, the good I would do, I do not. And the evil I would not, I do. Our author, Edgar Allan Poe, said simply, we are perverse. However it may be, there can be no question that Uncle Jonas is evil. I know he means to kill me. Through overwork and little food. And then do with Dora what he desires. But what can I do? We're trapped here on this isolated farm in the wilderness, cut off from any possible help prisoners in the hands of this evil old man who... A car. Coming down the road, a car. A car. The game warden. I forgot the game warden. Hi there. Hi. Wait up. Wait up. Sure. Sure. Well, hello. Ah. Uh, daring, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We met once, months ago. Uh, remember? I was plowing the fields and you came by and... Sure, sure, I remember. Listen, I need help. Will you help me? Well, mm, if I can. We tried to get away from here, my wife and I, but our car broke down. Oh, is that your car half blocking the road six miles or so back? Yeah, yeah, carburetor went sour. I tried to fix it, but it didn't hold up. Well, there's not much I can do. I'm no mechanic. No, no, no but you could pick up a carburetor for me in Pomfret, couldn't you? The next time you come out this way... Yeah, sure, sure, I could do that, but... Well, you'll have a long wait. I don't come out this way more than once every other month there, Mark. Oh, that's okay. I can wait. But will you do it? Sure, glad to. Charlie? Charlie? Yeah? He wants to see you. Your uncle. All right. Coming. Is that your wife? Yeah. I don't know. When do you want to get away from here? If I had a wife as pretty as yours... I wouldn't want her around that dirty old man either. Come in. Come in. Well, where you been? I told Dora I wanted to see you ten minutes ago. I was was working in the barn. Working? You working? <laughs> Look at me, damn it. Not at that clock. I was looking at that clock. Look at me when I talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got to thinking. It's a waste of time. You trepsing back and forth from the fields to the house, from the barn to the house. So, from here on, I've decided you'll live in the barn. What? You you can't do this. Dora and me can't live in the barn. I didn't say Dora. I said you. Me in the barn. And Dora here... That's right. Dora, alone in this house, with you? Never. Now, you listen to me. Never. You think I don't know what you're up to? Dora's told me everything. How you've been after her, forcing yourself on her. And if you think if you're alone in the house with her, alone at night, you can get what you're after. Never. Oh, yes. You fool. Don't you think I planned this from the beginning? From the day I got your sniveling letter begging me to take you in? And the day I laid eyes on her for the first time, I knew. I knew then that it was a good plan and I'd go through with it. You, you... A simple plan, too. So simple it couldn't go wrong. Starve you, weaken you, work you into your grave. The way you worked Ruthie into hers... Oh, no, the child didn't matter one way or the other. It was you. It didn't I... matter. What? My little girl, my Ruthie, didn't matter. Oh, here, here, here now. You... Wait, wait a minute, child. I... 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 Yeah. 
On the floor. Doing it, son. On the floor. Oh! Oh! Oh, my God! Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. I killed him. I killed him. In my rage, I killed him. Oh. Oh. I am a murderer. I realize that I must do something to hide the body. But what? What? Where to hide it? If I try to get out of the house into the barn door, I see me doing it. A chance I couldn't take. If I drank down the cellar, there was the risk she'd hear me. Where could I hide? And then, then and then my eyes, as they had so often done before, my eyes went to the the clock, the clock that has stopped the, the very instant his heart stopped. <laughs> A big clock, six feet tall and two feet wide. Was it possible that I might? If, if, if I could stand him up in that space, the clock hiding him, for, for a time, only, only for a time, to let him think what, what, I, what I might do afterwards. Yes, that is what I did. And just in time, I just stood his body against the wall and pushed the clock back into place, hiding it when... Yes? Mrs. Daring, of course. Yes. I'm Game Warden Carrington. I'd like to talk to your husband. Oh, uh... Well, he's with his uncle just now. Could you wait? Well, I'm afraid not. I want to get back to Pomfret before nightfall. Uh huh. Is it important? <laughs> it is to your husband. Well, Uncle Jonas gets angry when. Well, uh, follow me. Thank you. What? What is it? I'm sorry to interrupt. The game warden's here. He says he's got to see Charles. Got to see him right away. Hello, Warden. You see about that carburetor, Daring? Oh? Uh, look, I don't like talking to you. You peering through a door open to crack. Could I come in? No, 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 no. Uh, Uncle Jonas doesn't allow anyone... No, to... that's all right. Come in. Where's Uncle Jonas? He, he went down to the barn be back in a little while. Oh. Well, uh, I'll leave you and the Warden together. Sit down, Warden. Oh, no, no, no. This will just take a minute, and I'm in a hurry. I got to thinking about that carburetor. Uh, carburetor. Yes. Carburetor. Uh, there's a good mechanic in Pomfret, uh, Hutchinson. He could maybe rebuild it for you, save you some money. Oh. Well. Uh, you all right, Daring? Yes. O only, only, only. Well, what is it? Why do you keep looking at that clock? It isn't going. Of course it isn't. Well, you can see that. The pendulum has stopped. Yes, 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 and, 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 and yet, uh, the, uh, about the carburetor. Well, I was going to suggest, but I want your permission first, uh, suggest I take the carburetor out of the car on my way back to Pomfret, you know? Yes, 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 do that. Well, the trouble is, I haven't got the tools. Tools? Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. Yes, I'm... I'm listening. I've got a couple of screwdrivers, but no wrench and no pliers, so I wondered if you might have what I need. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I... Well, if you could let me have them, I'll stop by the car, get the carburetor out, and take it to Hutchinson and Pomfret. You'll have plenty of time to work on it, because I won't be coming back this way for another... Daring. Daring, what is it? You you think you're clever, don't you, Wooden? Well, that's a funny thing to say. Nothing clever about taking a car. I, 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 I don't mean that. You know I don't mean that. Well, what do you mean? The sound. You hear it as well as I do. You hear it. What are you talking about? The heartbeat. His heartbeat. It has to be that. The clock has stopped. Look. Look. The clock has stopped, but the beat, the, the, the beat, you hear it. I don't hear anything. Liar. How could you not hear it? 
You didn't tell about the carburetor. You knew I was going to do it. You saw it on my face when we talked out there today. You must have seen it. In my face. Even, even though I didn't know it. But... Well, now what? Daring, have you gone mad? Saw what in your face? You were going to do what? Kill him. Kill him. Kill him! Hey! Well, what are you doing? Why are you pulling the clock away from that? Hey, hey, look out! It's falling! See? See? Oh, good Lord. Good Lord. <laughs> Uh, you've come, Dora. Uh, uh, sit down, Darius, and give me a moment. I, I just want to adjust the escape mechanism on this clock. Ah, there. All fixed? All fixed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they said it couldn't be done. If it can be done, you're the man to do it. Dr. Leonardo says you're a genius when it comes to fixing clocks. Goodness, you fixed just about everyone in this whole... In the asylum. I know what it is, Dora, dear. I... I just don't know why I'm here. No matter, sweetheart. So long as you're happy. Oh, very. Very. And you? I'm fine. Uh, and Ruthie? Little Ruthie. How is she? She couldn't be better, child. She sends her love. Uh, give mine to her. Mm. Oh, dear, dear, dear. What? This escape mechanism. Still not working the way it should. If you'll excuse me. Go ahead. In a little room in a large institution, a very gentle, a very sweet old man tinkers happily with clocks and watches. And an old lady, a very old but very attractive old lady, visits him weekly. He lives in another world. She in this. Small matter. Both are happy. I'll be back shortly. Well, to come full circle... You, sir, became Charles Daring. And you, ma'am, or would you prefer Ms., became Dora. And as I pointed out earlier, you couldn't have done it without that miracle imagination. Think, how completely did you become Charles, Dora? Did you become them? Or did you only listen? With your ears, listen. If that is so... Try again. Ears are not enough. Try using your soul. Our cast included Fred Gwynn, Anne Shepard, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I can't seem to get up from the chair. What's happened to me? I've drugged you, that's what's happened. Drugged me? To make killing you, murdering you, easier. Murder? You stupid, ugly little fool. You really believed me when I said I found you not unattractive. That I'd be delighted to escort you to the carnival. What? I know. What are you saying? I'm saying that I'm going to do the same with you that I did with Margarita. Wall you up in the catacombs below. You... You killed her? Then walled her up? Oh, no. Oh, she was alive when I did it. At least she was when I put the last stone in place. But she didn't last long after that, I'm sure. It couldn't have been more than an hour or so before she suffocated huh? to death. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.
episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel.